proposition, you may now begin. So what is the burden of proof of Team Kingswood? So we have provided our reference materials unlike you. What? Exactly. So, sir, do you believe in centralized power? Sorry, sir? Do you believe in centralized power? No, sir, we do not. So what is the reason for the ethnic conflict in Sri Lanka? Uh, improper devolution of power, and that's why we proposed proper devolution of power by the improvement we are proposing, sir. Again. So throughout this debate, side opposition has been agreeing with the principles of side yeah. proposition. Yeah. So yeah. as the opposition, aren't you supposed to contradict our ideas? No, sir, we never agreed with you. We agreed upon an improvement of the 13th Amendment, whereas you agreed upon abolishing an improvement of the 13th Amendment, sir. Exactly, sir. But why would you want to improve the 13th Amendment? Because we know that it's fraud, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, both of the teams want the same end goal. But what the side opposition is doing, you are changing the complete system. And but you want to still keep the tagline, the 13th yeah, Amendment. Yeah, yeah. So what, is, what exactly is the purpose yeah. of doing that? Ladies and gentlemen, the proposition is buying a new car for a flawed engine. But we are repairing that engine and using the same car, which is the ideal solution for Sri Lanka. Because given Sri Lanka is in a post-war condition and we are not economically strong enough to go for a new constitution. So if all the parts of the car is damaged, isn't it better to buy a new car yeah, than yeah. damage the car? Under what circumstances, under what references are you saying all the parts of the 13th Amendment is flawed, sir? So the head of administration in these devolved units are appointed by the central government so isn't that the isn't that doesn't that prove that the base of these uh, devolve, uh, devolving power is flawed in and that's yeah, why yeah, sir yeah, yeah. and that's why we propose limit the executive power of the governor and governor should be elected and empower the chief ministers and board of ministers with ministerial power we are proposing a proper devolution of power under a panel of judges sir what do you have to say about article 154k 154k elaborate on sir please so what do you have to say about 154K? Uh, sir, you, what, are, what are you referring to, sir? I'm talking about the provincial councils refusing to abide by the central government. Sir, Sri Lanka at the moment is at a post-war situation and if you empower them with a lot more power, it would encourage them for a separatism which is not possible for the current context of Sri Lanka. Sir, you didn't get, my, get what my captain meant, sir. According to Article 154K, the president can dissolve the provincial councils whenever he wants. So by, by amending it, you can't really achieve it because the executive power of the president uh, is given by the constitution. So are you going to amend the constitution itself? Sir, how are you going to uh, minimize the executive no, 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 powers of the no, no, no. president? Sir, sir, it is not our burden. Our only burden in this debate is to prove to the sir, House... Sir, if you are coming up with please, a proper sir, solution, please, you have to elaborate on no. how you are proposing that solution. Sir, yeah. fine, sir. sir, first of all, you said that you were for devolution. But then again, you said that if you give yeah, yeah. more power, it would lead to separation. Isn't that a contradiction on sir, your side? Sir, that's why we are suggesting Appendix 1, law and order should be the same. Land and land settlement should be reformed in a manner where power will be properly devoluted. Sir, we are not siding with you. We are saying... The power should be properly devoluted in a manner where there will be no separatism in a post-war situation. Sir, sir, are you saying that if we can come up with a huge list of the flaws in the 13th Amendment, you would go out there and amend each of those flaws, and at the end of the day, you will only have the tagline saying, the 13th Amendment, but it would be yeah, necessary yeah, yeah, yeah. a separate amendment with just the tagline, the 13th Amendment. Are you agreeing with that, sir? Sir, you have been saying there are a lot of huge flaws in, in the 13th Amendment, but you have not come up with the flaws you mentioned, and you have not come up with the guidelines of, of improvement oh, by, third, I mean, uh, by abolition of the 13th Amendment, sir. So what do you have to say about Article 154F2? Sir, please elaborate because, the because our, our, time our time is limited, sir. Our time is limited. You have to elaborate on regarding, if you are asking a question. Regarding the board of ministers, sir. Regarding the board of ministers, what, what are you saying, sir? What's your point? Sir, according to Article 154B, the board of ministers, even if the governor is, uh, even if the governor is asked to abide by the advisors of these ministers, he is not obliged, sir. He is not being questioned, even if he yeah, yeah. acts on his discretion. And that's why we are proposing empowerment of the chief ministers and board of ministers, sir. Haven't you been listening to our speeches? We are proposing a proper power devolution. Sir, why don't I like you, sir? Because that is the ideal, ideal solution for. Sri Lanka at the moment for in, in order to reach the targets of uh, uh, development and peace. So, so, is the responsibility of the opposition to agree with the principles of the proposition or to contradict the proposition? It's up to you, sir. 
From the time we've changed the format of round three, I believe that this was the most heated up round that our audience have ever been able to see. And on that note, we're ready to move on to a short commercial break, but stay tuned for the closing statement. Welcome back. This is the final round of the semi-finals. It could be the last chance that you receive to witness some of these debaters in action. However, we're ready to present to both the teams their last and final chance to establish their argument to prove to us that what they have been speaking on and stressing on so far is correct. Over to the opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, going beyond repairs is a dangerous statement to throw about when we can improve the 13th Amendment as pointed out why this unnecessary burden on our country. The evolution of power should be a practical reality that is both practical and fitting to implement. And this we can achieve through improving the 13th Amendment. Abolishing it is completely removing it which may cost us more than we can afford at this point. So let us move towards the world of practicality, my dear proposition. It is essential that you understand this. The 13th Amendment is quite capable and appropriate to the post-war nation of Sri Lanka. Because we need to have the support of the central government. But we need some changes too, in order to give more power to the provinces, to implement their development programs and to cater to the needs of the people. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we should abolish it altogether. We focus on improving certain parts of the 13th Amendment and properly implementing it. What you fail to, fail to see is that the current position of the country is not necessarily the misgivings of the 13th Amendment. And if there are misgivings in it, we can easily improve upon it. I ask, let me ask you a proposition. Why should we not improve upon this? Why should we go for a total overhaul by abolishing it? Our objective, our objective is sustainable peace and sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, politics is not a religion. It must, we must govern on the basis of evidence, not theology or ideology. Therefore, if you look at our research, it is easy to see that we can improve on the, third in, uh, on the, uh, on the factors which my first and second speaker also mentioned. Now, summing up, my first speaker established the base with the sources we used and showed we can improve the 13th Amendment, which is the practical solution in, the po in this post-war nation. My second speaker pointed out the shortcomings in the present 13th Amendment, and he, al he also went into detail on how we could improve these shortcomings by a simple majority as opposed to the proposition who is suggesting an extreme step which also requires two-thirds of the majority to pass the solution. <laughs> all in all, we are looking for, for a more practical, feasible, and a long-lasting solution. Not just ideological solutions that look good on paper. Thus, improving the 13th Amendment is the most practical solution suitable for Sri Lanka to maintain its integrity and to, and to develop as a country, as a whole country, with sufficient power, devolution, and achieve its goals. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, what was the burden of proof of the side proposition? It was to prove why the 13th Amendment should be abolished, proving how it is structurally and inherently flawed, ladies and gentlemen. But what was the burden of proof of the side opposition? It was to provide research material to this house, which is in inherently which is inherently redundant, ladies and gentlemen. And also, when we were trying to prove that this 13th Amendment is structurally and inherently flawed, the side opposition principally agreed to us, saying that, look, there are flaws, but we are trying to amend them. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we try to prove that as a side proposition, fulfilling our, uh, fulfilling our duty, that whatever the flaws in the 13th Amendment, uh, whatever the flaws in the 13th, 13th Amendment, even if they are amended, ladies and gentlemen, it won't lead to, uh, lead to the survival of 13th Amendment as 13th Amendment because it is structurally and inherently flawed, ladies and gentlemen. So what we see is a side opposition failing to understand their burden of proof in the first place and being impractical on, uh, on the other hand because they do not understand that they, uh, once, they, once they are trying to amend the whole th uh, 13th Amendment, ladies and gentlemen, they are actually trying to abolish it themselves. And also, moving into, the, moving into the consequences of passing this motion, ladies and gentlemen. They said that this 13th this third, this Amendment has done so many things and uh, it was there for 30 years and that is why they can't, uh, they can't abolish it, ladies and gentlemen. But, ladies and gentlemen, even if 
the 13th Amendment existed for 30 years, has it fulfilled its obligation? Has it fulfilled its objective, which is to provide a solution to this ethnic problem, which was agreed by the side opposition itself? Ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the solution, the best solution for this ethnic, uh, ethnic problem in Sri Lanka, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is to provide a political so uh, solution, which cannot be achieved by uh, amending the 13th Amendment in the first place, because it won't be 13th Amendment after amending every every single article in the 13th Amendment, ladies and gentlemen. And also they were talking about the practicality of this motion, which they were contradicting themselves because even they were trying to improve the existing system. And if they're, talk if they're talking about the practicality, they can't improve the system in the first place. For all these reasons, we see that the side proposition win wins this debate. Thank you.